The Oracle Network. I have my water this time. Uh, I was just going to refill this. Brought I'm not going to tie it to him. <laughs> Doggy cup holders. We put a little saddle on him, and then there's cup holders on the side. Each side of them with big pockets. Like, you're going to be our cargo, cargo pant thing. Yeah, and then you can deliver our drinks. Mm -hmm. All of the things we need. Roscoe, you want to be our dream carrier? You want to be useful? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey guys. Welcome, welcome. I'm Abby. And I'm Shauna. And this is Anxious and Afraid, the podcast. Oh, and also Michael and Roscoe are here. Correct. The boys are in the house. <laughs> we got the boys in the house. <laughs> welcome if it's your first time. Welcome back if it's not. Sup, sup. We talk about stuff that's weird and makes you feel weird. All the weirds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we like. That's what we do. Yep. For our entertainment. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> And yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's kind of a carefree episode, so I'm just going to break the mold and ask you, how, how are you? Oh, oh, how's the last week been? Let's just chit chat away. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh, baby's good. She's popping. She bigger. She moving. sean has got a back brace on today. Oh, I'm so hot with my back brace. It's super, <laughs> super hot. Uh, I f yeah, I just got it. So this is my second time wearing it. But since I sit so damn much mm -hmm. against, you know, I work all day. So I still, I sit all day. I can't yeah. help it. Um. So I'm hoping that helps with some lower back issues that I'm experiencing. It's getting harder to get out of bed and out of the car. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, it's, it's getting weird. Um, but yeah, things are good. We had, um, I don't know if you want me to mention this, but like Friendsgiving and Thanksgiving yeah. happened. We did a Friendsgiving, you guys. It was, <laughs> it was actually really good. We pulled it off. You have no idea how many years. We've literally lost count. I, uh, I... I'm cl it's probably close to a decade. It's close to a decade. I'm positive. It's probably like eight years that we tried and talked yeah. about it. Trying to do a Friendsgiving and, and it, every single year we failed. It just would come out of nowhere and we're like, oh, well, November's done. And <laughs> I guess we have to deal with our own families. So damn yeah. it. <laughs> yep. Failed again. But this year somehow it doesn't make sense that we did it this year because I have one arm, you're pregnant and Jesse has a brand new baby. Fresh but baby. Somehow it still worked out. I know. I honestly would like to thank Chad's um, pessimism because <laughs> he was just like, um, you, you're, you guys are funny. You think we're going to do this in, in, this year out of all the circumstances? And I'm like, oh, you, oh we're going to spite you so hard. We're A challenge? Yeah, you're challenging? Oh, we're doing it. Challenge accepted now. <laughs> it was so fun. That was a great time. Thanks for hosting. Of course. It was super fun and appreciated. And then there was a, a obviously regular Thanksgiving. Yeah, how was that for you? It was good. Just did family stuff, and I still have another Thanksgiving this uh, tomorrow to go to. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because, oh, you know, now my parents are divorced, so there's, like, multiple holidays. Fun stuff. So all you other kids of divorce understand that. Yeah. So. I had two in one day. I, I had to drive up to Albany, so that was an hour drive for me. <sighs> Which kind of sucks because it's just like two hours out of my day just driving. Yeah. Um, but I did it to make an appearance because I'm a good child. And <laughs> <laughs> that was not as bad as I thought. I'm, you know, family. Went good. <laughs> it went good. It, yeah, the food was good. No glasses were thrown. No, there was no drama. Everything was very chill. Yeah, ours That's is good. very chill as well. It's like I feel like maybe because everyone's kids are getting older. But usually it's like this just hectic chaos for however long mm -hmm. you're there but this time it was calmer i was like this yeah. is weird <laughs> yeah used to this i mean i definitely didn't stay long i kind of like ate and bounced <laughs> yeah i mean we had to go to michael's family's thing too so i guess i'll be having three thanksgivings this year yeah i'm already sick of turkey i gotta say it i don't like it. i only have like a few bites of turkey i'm all about the sides then i'm good for a whole year yeah. I know, same. I only, I get like the tiniest serving of turkey and then I just eat all the sides. Same, same. Totally more of a ham girl. Really? I don't really like ham, but I do like my sister's ham. <clears throat> it's all right. 
My Sister's Hand. <laughs> Sounds like a weird <clears throat> memoir or something. <laughs> it's an indie movie. My Sister's Hand. <laughs> <laughs> true, true that. Um, so do we want to keep talking or? No, what? let's just do silence for the rest of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, podcasts are not talking. This is so people can fall asleep to the to podcasts. Oh, are we doing ASMR? ASMR. No, we're actually going to stop talking after this. A moment of silence for all the family <laughs> drama that is going to be But we did have a little announcement, uh, for our merch because we released a few new Look, we've been we've been working on things. I remember like teasing it a handful of months ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we finally decided to just randomly drop some Black Friday uh new merch. Yeah, we have four new designs. One of them is that really cool image that we had made by Allison. Yeah, our cartoon versions of ourselves. Yeah, and so our cool. Ca- and our cats. So, and you can get that in like a mug. You can get it in a sticker, a magnet. Yeah, a shirt, all different kinds of shirts. Um, it's you just choose the design and then choose what you want the design on. It's all pretty kinds cool. of colors. Yeah, there's a fun alien one mm-hmm. that we have now. Fun like Mother Nature be be scary one. <laughs> yeah, so go check those check them out because they're fresh. They're new. They're cool. It's on T Public. Yes, under Anxious and Afraid the Pod. Yes, we also posted the link. <laughs> right, and if you get the shirt, order a size up. I'm sure you'll you'll want that. Yeah, always. Always order a size up. Mm-hmm. If you like your shirts to be comfy. If you like them to be tight, then, you know, you, you do you, boo-boo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. And also, we just got a delivery on our front porch. <laughs> I think we need to take a break for a second. Uh-oh. Hilarious. What is that? I don't know. Big boxes. Okay, so... We got the delivery. We got the delivery. Everything's good. <laughs> uh, okay, let's just do it. We're just going to get into this episode of yes. what we're trying to do. And today's episode will be a little different because of the holidays. Yeah. But we still wanted to give you some content. We want to still give something, something. Something, something. Um, and we've, you know, we've been super busy. And I didn't have time to do a full episode or the ability, really, um, with one hand. But... Oh, yeah. And neither have I. I've just been... My mind is overwhelmed. <laughs> right. But we do have an episode for you today. We're here. Um, let's have some fun with it. So a little while back, I was sent a book to review. <laughs> now, I'm a nobody. I'm not famous. I don't have any kind of credentials really to be reviewing a book or giving an opinion on one. But here I am. And here we are. <laughs> um, originally, when we were contacted by the author's team for this book, because they have people... <laughs> They have their own people. They have people to reach out. <laughs> to our people, which is just us. <laughs> I know. I was like, I'll have my people get back to your people. And it's just me. <laughs> um, so, yes, they reached out and they asked us if we'd be interested in actually interviewing the author. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Scary. No, thank you. I'm sorry. We're <laughs> anxious know. over here. I know. Do you see the title of our podcast? We um, don't handle strangers well. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, they wanted us to interview, and we were just kind of like, LOL, um, no. Uh, (laughs) So we politely declined, but they were kind of persistent. They're like, you know, they kept emailing us like they wanted us to get behind this book or to, like, check it out. And so I was finally like, okay, yeah, just send me the book. I'll read it. Uh, I'll talk about it Mm -hmm. on the podcast. And they did. (laughs) They sent it to me right before surgery, so I read it um, during recovery. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I'm not qualified, but I'm going to review it for you. And um, it's a legit book. It's a legit book, and it's like got a nice cover. It has beautiful illustrations. Yeah, it's quality. I I admit I was expecting to get a crappy book. I was like, this is going to be a bad book. Why would they send a perfectly good book to a loser like me? And shut up. <laughs> but it's a really nice book. It's like I showed Sean. It's got like the pages are good quality. It's mm-hmm. I was really surprised. I was like, I would buy this book. Like it's actually really yeah, it's really pretty um so yeah um the book is called chasing ghosts a tour of our fascination with spirits and the supernatural and it's written by mark hartsman you can probably tell from the title that it's a book that we would enjoy oh for sure it, is. right it's about ghosts uh who doesn't want to learn more about the supernatural so this book is full of super interesting information and many of the pages have 
uh, these illustrations. The font kind of looks like the font used in Harry Potter, which I found to be <laughs> interesting and comforting. Um, comforting. <laughs> I don't. Harry Potter is so comforting to me. Like it's so weird. Just seeing the font is like I don't know. Brings you back to your childhood. Such kind a of fucking thing. nerd. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, I bet there's a bunch of Potter nerds out there who know exactly the font that I'm talking about. Oh, for sure. Uh, yes. So. Let's talk about this book. So it, it um, I think it's a perfect book for someone who isn't a big reader necessarily. Uh, Chasing Ghosts, it goes through many different topics, people, and events, but it breaks them down into small sections that are easy to read and digest. And I think that uh, Mark Hartsman did a good job of making complex things sound a lot more simple. Um, and he did a good job of explaining aspects of the supernatural world that, uh, at least for me, were are sometimes a little harder to understand for like the average lay person. Yeah. Made, made it very digestible. Yeah. So like, even if you're not a big reader, you're not like an expert on the supernatural. This is just like a fun book to have around. It's like the perfect book for me because I hate yes, reading. Yes. I was going to say, it's kind of like a Shauna <laughs> book really. Um, so the first section in the book is about the history behind ghosts and where the ideas behind spirits and like hauntings originated. Ooh, I love that. Mm-hmm. The next section is all about the spiritualism movement Yes. Which I found endlessly fascinating. I mean, that was huge back in the day. Huge. There was so much more to it than I ever imagined. Like, so many different just, like, avenues of spiritualism that I didn't even know yeah, existed. for sure. Um, and there's, like, really great pictures and stuff of, this, of like, spiritualists and, like, in their seances. It's, it's great. Uh, the third section is about paranormal phenomena and famous hauntings. Nice. And the fourth section is about technology used in the paranormal world. You know, like EVPs. Oh, it really covers all the all the it goods. Does. Yes. Uh, you know who even made a uh, mention is our friend Zach. ZB <laughs> Zach Bacon. <laughs> Hell yeah! He even mentioned Ghost Adventures and a little blurb. Oh, I mean, he's the new king of paranormal, man. He made it in. He's top of the top. I, I, I we should send it to him. Be like, look, look, you made it. <laughs> he's like, who are you? Okay, love it. Uh, so there. Were a few stories that I found to be particularly interesting, and I thought you guys also might enjoy them. So I figured I could just uh, like I'll share the book on the um, on our like the episode show notes and everything. But I thought I would just like read you a few stories from the book. Oh my gosh, I love that. Let's do it. Okay. So the first story I want to share is about a couple of different ooky spookies from Asia. Ooh. And they are categorized as the hungry ghosts of Asia. That's me. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be a hungry ghost when I'm dead. <laughs> Still searching for all the food. Shauna, the hungry ghost of the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> Your haunting is just gonna be like refrigerators opening. <laughs> right. Give me, I'll be in the kitchens. <laughs> Give me food. Okay, here we go. I'll just read this. <clears throat> the hungry ghosts of Buddhist, Hindu, and Taoist traditions are found across East Asia. These famished souls are typically depicted as ghosts with long, skinny necks, no. tiny mouths, no. and huge, empty stomachs, <laughs> <laughs> suffering for having lived a sinful life. Oh, no. In Japanese lore, hungry ghosts called, I think it's Gaki, Pay for their corrupt, oh God, pay for their corrupt, wicked lives by having to eat meals of excrement. This is gross <laughs> very fast. I know. I was like, okay, this is going in. <laughs> Everyone needs to hear about these ghosts. Uh, whereas another form, the, oh man, I tried to practice this word. Jin, Jin, Jikanin, nope, Jikaninki. Jikaninki? We love you Here. no matter what. You look Michael. Jiki <laughs> Jiki Ninki. Jiki Ninki. Jiki Ninki. There's a lot of I's and N's. Pretty sure. Jiki Ninki. Jiki Ninki. Jiki Ninki. Jiki Ninki. Yep. Interesting. That one. Maybe. You try it, Shauna. <laughs> Jinky Ninky. I think you both did it better than me. I'm looking at it. Um, okay. Yeah. So they like to feast on human corpses. No. Why choose that? All the things. I mean, it's that or shit. Which one? Oh, okay. I'd go human too. <laughs> Regarding the latter, an old tale speaks of a certain village where the bodies of the dead were prayed for and left alone at night as everyone went to the next village to avoid the strange things that would happen to the corpses. 
In the story, a visiting priest, who feared no ghosts or demons, stayed behind with one such body, and indeed, strange things occurred. He saw the shape shift the corpse, as with hands, and devour it, more quickly than a cat devours a rat, beginning at the head and eating everything, the hair and the bones and even the shroud. What? The, (laughs) The priest later encountered the creature, which had been living as a hermit on a mountain. I am... Oh, here we go. I am a... Jikininki. 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 Michael, say it. I am a... Jikininki. 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 That's it. An eater of human flesh. Have pity upon me and suffer me to confess the secret fault by which I became reduced to this condition. The ghost had also been a priest while alive, but was selfish and performed his duties only as a matter of business. Since yeah. his death, he had been obliged to feed upon the corpses of the people who die in this district. It begged the priest to perform a special Buddhist service to relieve it of its horrible hunger. The visitor did as he was requested, and it, the creature disappeared. Huh. Uh, there's another one called the Bhuts. It's B-H-O-O-T-S. The Bhuts <laughs> of ancient India were hungry ghosts that materialized from those who departed this world unexpectedly early. Dying in an accident, being killed in battle, and even suicide would turn troubled souls into behoots. And like ghosts of other cultures, they'd come back especially angry if their body hadn't been buried or given a proper burial ceremony. Mm. Recognizing behoots wasn't terribly difficult. They cast no shadow and spoke with a nasal twang. (laughs) For anyone still unsure if they were face-to-face with a ghost, behoots had backwards feet no. To symbolize something gone awry. <laughs> Ew, I don't like that. I don't I'm, like the backwards feet. No, I'm disturbed. Hovering around villages, they sought out new bodies or their old ones to possess so that they could resume their lives. If successful, <laughs> they'd cause their hosts to tremble, speak nonsensically, and become argumentative with everyone. If Oof. a friend or family member suddenly started behaving erratically, it was thought a behoot had gotten to them. Mm. aside from craving new bodies these hungry ghosts would eat almost anything and yearned for water and milk i mean same is this also you yeah besides the backwards currently (laughs) Currently. (laughs) at times they would chug they would chug gallons at a time down their needle necks needle necks needle necks they have skinny necks i mean so they're so they're so hungry, yet when they're able to eat or drink, it's just the tiniest neck. They have like and mouth. a tiny skinny neck, but they're trying to drink gallons of liquid. Sad life. I, yeah, this doesn't sound like a fun way to go. Uh, some women, women feared letting their children leave the house after drinking fresh milk. <laughs> oh, but if it was necessary, they'd put salt or ashes into their children's mouths to ward thirsty behoots away. I'm sorry, but no, that's a bad morning. Like, open up, poor children. Wash that milk down with some ash. Ew. Some scholars speculate the dread of such a um, uh, such malevolent spirits uh, led to practice of cremation in India, so no dead bodies could be reanimated. Mm. Uh, prayers and the burning of turmeric were believed to repel the ghosts from inhabiting bodies of the living. Mm. So those are some hungry ghosts. Mm, interesting. Kind of um, also reminds me of an episode of uh, the Forever Hungry Man, Tarare. Ter- I, I immediately thought of Tarar or however Terar, you said his yeah, name. Whatever his name is. Yeah, I was like... Constantly hungry. Constantly hungry. Well... To the point where he almost maybe ate a baby... <laughs> <laughs> Did he really like milk? I can't remember. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he would drink anything, but I mean, that's my jam right now is fucking milk. <laughs> I I don't know what it is with milk. I feel like even when I have cereal now, I just don't even want the milk. Wow. Or like, you know, when you're all done, there's some left over. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with me. I used to like it. I Now I just like don't really care about milk that much anymore. I could live off of it unfortunately yeah like you can just crave a glass of milk and i'm like i don't really care like a solid huge one and like if i ever like wake up in the middle of the night just go to the jug <laughs> like go right to the jug I just go to the jug the hungry ghost <laughs> <It's> the <best. laughs> okay so the next stories is pretty bananas um it's it's in the spiritualism section yeah which was my favorite okay i just really can't believe what people used to fall for um mm-hmm. it's just 
Okay, so this next story is about a spiritual wedding scam. Oh, no. (laughs) Don't ruin somebody's wedding. Yeah, so let's get into this one. In 1927, an entrepreneurial medium named Nellie Seymour decided to earn a little extra cash by playing matchmaker between the living and the dead. No. Not that type of wedding. Yeah, it's like dead catfish or something. I'm not sure. Um, For the past... Seven decades, communicating with lost loved ones had been a thriving business. But why stop at old flames when there are so many new spirits to meet? Oh, that's sad. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Moore had been working. This is even more sad. So she had been working with a 71-year-old Kansas farmer. That's who she scammed? Yeah. Oh. Named John Siebold. She roped him in by first summoning the spirit of his deceased son. And then, after earning his trust, she introduced him to Sarah during a seance. Sarah was a spirit apparently looking for a relationship uh, back on good old earth and probably wasn't too picky given her discarnate situation. (laughs) Just a little little detail there. Yeah, I mean, he's 71 in his prime. He's... (laughs) He's close to that dimension. Like, <laughs> I mean, in the 20s, I'm impressed that he's in his 70s and still honestly kicking around and like looking for love. He's like, hey, 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 hey. Uh. <laughs> Siebold and Sarah flirted through the seances. <laughs> oh, God, what is flirting in the 20s? I know. What does that sound like? <laughs> uh, I want to be there. Um, no, it would be so cringe. I don't think I could be there. So they flirted, and soon enough, he proposed. Always the opportunist, Moore offered her services to conduct the marriage ceremony. She can just do anything. Mm -hmm. Like any wedding, there were attendees from both sides. Siebold's were alive. Sarah's were not. (laughs) Also, wow, he got some family to, like, go along with this? That's true. I didn't think about that. What are the invites for that look like? (laughs) invisible ink (laughs) (laughs) like how do you explain to your family that you're getting married to a ghost wow that's bonkers yeah do you think people got on wedding gifts get him a ouija board (laughs) oh yeah here here talk to your wife with this ouija board okay not surprisingly this unusual form of marital bliss um it didn't last no way. In fact, Siebold may have started to sour on his spirit bride before they even made it to the honeymoon. <laughs> An empty chair was provided for Sarah, who failed to materialize, despite assur- assurances that she was there. <laughs> uh, so Siebold sued. Okay, yeah. The wedding had cost him $100. Which is a lot back then. Yeah, 1920s money. Yeah, plus he bought roses for Sarah, purchased a wedding gown (gasps) and a ring, and handed over deeds to 480 acres of land to Moore. No. Yeah, they're like, yeah, it's a pretty pricey affair for a bride who wouldn't and couldn't show up. Mm -hmm. And as if that weren't bad enough, he forked over thousands more based on suggestions given by other ghosts that Moore conjured. No. This included payments for her rent, new furniture, and her children's education. This is for the the spiritualist. Yeah. (laughs) At times, Siebel claimed this money was, quote, whisked whisked away in the darkened seance room by an illuminated hand. Oh, man. Uh, For these damages, the farmer's lawsuit sought $7,500 and a judgment against Moore. The medium defended herself, claiming that all transactions were business dealings. Siebel, she testified, came to her in poor health, and he wanted to promote spiritualism and leave something good behind to, uh, to perpetuate his memory. He had the money, and she was more than happy to provide the spiritualistic work he allegedly desired. Mm. Despite the absurdities of a spirit wedding, the judge ruled that Siebold couldn't reclaim his money unless he could produce a contract with a medium that was illegal. Sadly, Siebold and his attorneys could not. So she got away with it. Bitch. Yeah, she got away with it. She got his money. She got all the stuff he gave her because, like, the paperwork that they drew up was, like, 
valid, apparently. Wow. I mean, no shade to old, um, I assuming white man. Um, <laughs> but man, they are easy to scam, unfortunately. And like, they are so stubborn enough to like just keep going with it. Yes. We see that a lot with like our financial institution. It's like, we, yeah, we work s- in a financial institution. It's sad. Yeah. So we're like trained to like catch like scam checks or like situations that like are mm-hmm. just so obviously scammy. Romance scams. Yeah. All and day it's just long. like, and you try to tell them and they're just like, no, no, it's legit. I have a girlfriend all the way on the, the side of the world and I send her money. And yep. And she's, Super rich, and she's going to save me someday. She's going to visit me, but she has so much going on. <laughs> yeah, if you're a man, and you are you have a, a romance online, and they keep saying they're going to come, but they actually never come, and they also ask you for your money, mm-hmm. it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Stop doing it. Run away. Yeah. And that's our PSA. <laughs> that's, that's our lesson here today. <laughs> because it is 100% a scam. I know a few people who need to hear that. Mm-hmm. I hope you're listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So that's my little blurb for spiritualism. But there was so many insane scams that people got away with yeah. during spiritualism. Like there's like paintings, there's photography, there's... For sure. Um, All those photos, fake photos. Spiritual, like ghosts playing band music, like... Wow. So many different like avenues that I did not realize existed in spiritualism. It was fun to read about. I mean, back in the day, I mean, it makes sense how they could get away with so much more ridiculousness than like in today's world. Yeah. And I loved it because they go, they tell you like how they were doing it all and like how they got away with it or like how they got caught, mm-hmm. which is also really interesting. Like when people finally caught on just like the techniques that they were using, like, or, like the Fox sisters, like, you know, about the Fox sisters. I think they were one of the originals. Oh, maybe. But they were really good at, like, cracking their toe knuckles and other things. Oh. And. That's paranormal. Yep. They'd be like, <laughs> they do the, the crack and, like, as, like, a knock or something to answer questions. Oh, interesting. And all kinds of fun stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go on to the next one. These um, are good stories. Do you like them? Yeah. Okay, good. These are, the, I, I picked out what I thought were probably some of the most, well, not most interesting, but my faves. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So the next one I almost covered on our podcast, Ooh. but decided to do The Exorcist instead. Do you remember the episode I did on the supposedly cursed movie set of The Exorcist? Yes. Well, there is a similar tale of woe for the movie The Poltergeist. Ooh. Many people thought, thought it was cursed, and you're going to see why. I'm going to read you this little blurb here. Okay. So this little section is called The Haunting of Poltergeist. So I don't know if you've seen the movie, but there's like the really famous scene where the little girl puts her hands up on like a TV screen and it's just like white noise. And she goes, they're here. Ew, I can picture it perfectly, but I don't think I've tortured myself to watch it. Okay. <laughs> when actor Heather O'Rourke's character, Carol Ann, spoke those now classic words, they were only meant to refer to spirits in the movie. Yet, looking back on the tragedies that followed the 1982 blockbuster release of Steven Spielberg and Toby Hooper's film Poltergeist, it seems some evil spirits escaped the actors' own TV screens and caused what became known as the Poltergeist curse. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. It began just weeks after the film's premiere when 22-year-old Dominique Dune, who played Carol Ann's older sister in the film, was strangled by her boyfriend following an argument at their home. Oh. suffering from brain damage and lying in a coma she died five days later in a hospital oh that's so sad that's fucked up. before the launch of the sequel actor julian beck who played kane uh the, the malevolent preacher succumbed to a long battle with stomach cancer and months after its release will Sampson, who played taylor the medicine man and most famously the chief in one flew over the cuckoo's nest oh. passed away after complications from a heart and lung transplant Mm. Neither death was shocking, given the actor's personal circumstances, Mm -hmm. but as rumors of the curse steadily grew, it hit its peak with the untimely passing of Heather O'Rourke. During the filming of Poltergeist 3, abdominal pains and a supposed bout of the flu uh, hospitalized her. She was only uh, 12 years old. Sadly, uh, cardiac arrest struck during an operation. The cause of death was listed as septic shock due to congenital uh, stenosis of the intestine. Sad. Coincidence is the logical cause of the cast missed 
misfortune, but when a film subject revolves around the supernatural, there are always those who suspect something more sinister might be at work. For sure. Because I did, I can't remember all the things that I did. I did the Exorcist film, and there were, and people died, and mm-hmm. so people thought that film set was cursed as well. I mean, do you really hear that with a lot of other filmmaking trilogies? I just know the Exorcist and the Poltergeist are the two that I know of that are like pretty famously cursed or yeah. like people talk about because they're like they're terrifying subject matter. <laughs> right, cuz with the with the Exorcist people are like, "Oh, I think a demon is like literally haunting our set." <laughs> like cuz oh yeah, because the set burned down. That was one of the weird things That's that happened right. with the Exorcist. Like, no one was there and the set burned down. Ew. Like, just weird stuff. That is weird. Uh, but, yeah, so that's just that's a small taste of the book. I'm not going to do any more, but um, I thought you guys would get a better sense of what you'd be getting if you decide to purchase Chasing Ghosts by Mark Hartsman. Um, I'm not being paid to say any of this, just so you all know. I just got the book for free. <laughs> yeah, truesies. But if I, you know, if I thought the book was crap, I wouldn't have made a whole episode out of it so oh for sure that's just me we're not liars yeah not lying it really was good i read you parts of it so you could see Mm -hmm. um but you know holidays around the corner so if you have someone in your life that likes spooky shit yeah get them spooky presents go get them a spooky book um yeah that's all i got for the book well thank you yeah hopefully you guys like that and maybe you can check out some of the more story or some of the stories in there they're really there was a lot of good um like haunted you know, penitentiaries and mansions and other stuff like that I didn't get into. So nice. Lots of variety of ghost stuff in there. A lot of variety. It was, it was across the board. It was, yeah, a lot of stuff. It was good. That's awesome. All right. Should we like slide into the city of the week? Let's slide in. And that goes to our OG homies in Eugene. Eugene, Oregon. We haven't done you guys in a while, and you're always supporting us. And this week, you were number one. Top of the top. Maybe we got some new Eugene fans. That'd be sweet. Hey, y'all. Hey, thank you so much for your love and support. Yep, we we pray. see you. We see you. Um, watching and listening to... I've been listening to the new Adele album, which I think is really good. Yeah, Jesse was talking about how amazing it was on yeah. Friendsgiving. It is really good. She's just sexy. Oh, I mean, I love Adele. I just never, I think you and I were talking about this too. I never took it upon myself to like actually listen to her whole albums. Yeah, same. I I always listen to her like, you know, obviously her hits, but I, I don't know why. I'm listening to the whole album now. I'm like, wow, this is so good. <laughs> yeah, she's great. I love her. Well, maybe give it a listen. I think you'll like it. I'll try. Okay. Um, <laughs> we have some mini announcement. Oh yeah, kind of thing. Shauna's baby shower is next weekend, so we can't record next weekend. Yeah, because it's on our typical recording day, Saturday. Um, so yeah, the holidays are coming up. The baby's coming up. Things are getting a little crazy around here. So I appreciate everyone, um, you know, being so patient with us and realizing that we have to like just take all these like random crazy breaks, but. Yeah, there's probably going to be breaks because of Christmas, so mm-hmm. things will be tumultuous, and <laughs> but we'll try. We're doing our best. We we appreciate you guys sticking with us for sure. Um, yeah. Oh, should we did get a review? Oh, let's just do that real quick. Okay, one second here. Okay. Oh, should I just read? Okay. Uh, okay. Review time. <laughs> This is from Jabberwix, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they titled it New Fave Podcast. Five stars. Thank you. Oh, okay. They said, I'm so picky when it comes to podcasts. If the vibes are terrible, um, two minutes in, I'm out. And these two are chef's kiss, is what they said. <laughs> The mwah. Mwah. Um, they are hysterical. They help me get through my work day. Also, finding a true crime podcast that's respectable or respectful about victims is hard, but you do you two do it so well. Aw, thank you. We try. I mean, I'm sure there's mistakes, but we try. Yeah, we really appreciate it. I know we're not perfect, but we do try and be respectful. Yeah, it's hard when you're doing comedy and like terrible, terrible things subjects. together. Like, <laughs> yeah, how do you break that tension every once in a while? Yeah, but I don't ever want someone like that was involved in a case to hear 
our stuff and just be feel shitty i think yeah. i would want to die so um <laughs> that's good. awesome thank, thank you so much thank you for that review that's awesome um i don't think we have anything left to talk about no you got to work on my shower things yeah jesus uh i'll be busy this week but we'll see you guys when we see you and we appreciate you yeah and i'm gonna go eat some tums because that's my new life now shauna's gonna go snack some tums and yeah i'm gonna say good up and good night Good up and good night, y'all. Okay, guys, my one and only source for this episode is Chasing Ghosts by Mark Hartsman. Our music is by Broke for Free and Matt Edwards, and we are edited by Michael. All right. Should I list our social needs? Please do. Um, we have a lot of our things at Anxious and Afraid, the pod. Um, so that's our handle for both of our Facebook page and group, along with our Instagram and Gmail. We have a Twitter at AA the pod. You can support us on patreon.com forward slash anxious and afraid. If you do that, you get um, some pretty nice perks. You get ad free episodes that are released a whole day early and you get a free sticker you can also support us for free if you can't do any of that by leaving a rate review you subscribe to the show tell your friends yeah we would appreciate all of it too right now anxious and afraid is partnered with the oracle network on cursive now also oh. one l so oh, I like i remember you know if you're gonna michael knows words ah because i wrote it erase the whole thing i mean no if you're gonna erase it erase the whole thing can't get care of you're a, <laughs> such a stubborn woman <laughs>